that might get my goat. <laughs> so, Big. Yes? Uh, a couple of days ago, we were talking about Rapunzel, right? Rapunzel? What is this Rapunzel of which you speak? Oh, you're right. There is no such movie as Rapunzel. What was I thinking of? Reboot Ralph? No, that's in oh. the future. Oh. Well, this is a sci-fi show sometimes, so... I can't remember what some... Disney called that Rapunzel movie. It had some kind of a cheesy pun based on hair. Thatched. Up braided. Oh. I believe it was called Tangled. Oh, Tangled. Bam. Nappy. <laughs> nappy. Uh, my sister needs a comb just to braid a nappy hair. That was my Snoop Dogg impersonation. How'd you like it? It was awful. <laughs> yes, it was. Okay, so we're talking about Tangled. Let's let's get some goat going. That's just me. I uh, I mourn for the... Uh, the animation. death of animation that is it is it's gone i think princess and the frog was its last gasp i don't know that we'll ever see it again and if it does come back it'll probably be some other company that brings it back it seems a little crazy to think because it wasn't i mean that was one of the first things that john lasseter did he said yo yo open up this thing all over again the two things that he did <laughs> remember when he got the job one was closed down production on the the fake toy story 3 uh -huh. and the second thing was let's start up the feature animation department again and uh, wasn't he gonna do shorts too he did they did the goofy one did like one right as far as i know they only did the one they didn't even do a short for any of these films that they pixar puts a short at the start of every single film could they not have done the same i don't know with with pixar it may be some kind of training thing that an up-and-coming director says, I'll, I'll do this short to show them what I'm capable of doing. And they'll give mm -hmm. me down the line one of our features. Mm -hmm. And Disney may not think that way because it's like, well, how do we make money on a short? Yeah. I don't. It's like a bonus for the people that come see your movie. You know, they'll, they'll, a reward that makes them feel good. And they're like, they feel good? <laughs> <laughs> they sell them later in a special DVD pack. You know, I don't know. There has been talk that the Toy Story characters are continuing in shorts and that there is actually a short in production right now, cool. whether it will make it on Cars 2 or be on Brave or not, I don't know, <laughs> or just be on Disney Channel or whatever, but they've already got them all yeah. in the computer. They've got several and... Disney Channel cartoons that they've done already for Cars that are called the Cars Tunes, where... They have a whole toy line for those. Uh, have you watched any of those cars? I have tunes? seen. I've seen several of them. There's Mater telling some kind of story that seems to be a tall tale, but maybe isn't. Goofy, fun stuff. It's uh, the same kind of thing that you would get from any kind of a short, except that it involves characters that we already know, which I guess is what you would get from like a Donald Duck short or a Goofy oh, short. Oh, geez. Why can't they have a Donald Duck short? Somebody, somewhere, yeah. do that. You, my nephew was just introduced to Mickey Mouse in the last, like, six months. He had no idea who Mickey Mouse was. And uh, he's been introduced to him via the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse thing. <laughs> but there is a silver lining to that, that now he knows who Mickey is. And I was like, oh, do you want to watch some real Mickey cartoons? And so I've got all these compilation DVDs of the old classic uh -huh. Mickey shorts. And he just ate them up. Thank goodness. He put them on. He said, what the hell is this? I thought Mickey was a CG character. I don't want to watch this crappy hand-drawn animation. That sucks. He has this flat skin. That's effing stupid. Uh, <laughs> and he's only... One and a half. It's weird that... Yeah, okay. So we've still got the, the page up for Princess and the Frog, and I just don't get it. It didn't fail spectacularly. Apparently, the production budget was $105 million, which isn't a lot in today's day and age. And the domestic total gross, $104 million. Oh, um, 104 and a half. Right. Uh, and then, the, oh. you know, there was foreign gross too, but it's not Black Cauldron we're talking about here. This movie made its money back theatrically and quadrupled that on DVD plus yeah, we showing it on TV and all friggin, that stuff. Uh, the brown ray? The, yes. We bought the Blu-ray combo pack, which I don't know if that costs more or less or what, but we, we bought the friggin' 12-disc set. 
for that movie and we didn't even like it that much which is crazy why did we do that anyways because, because you were trying to support this dying <laughs> art form and i went and saw it in the theater and bought the 12 disc pack and you know i i can totally appreciate that that's nice that you would do that but as we speak tangled still hasn't made its money back yeah it's a no. long ways from it I, now, Tangled's budget is $260 million. That's more than Titanic. Well, I guess we talked about that with the extensive reshoots or redos and reimagining. Re renders. Of the film. You know, that probably kicked it up there. It is really, really detailed in its animation and stuff, but it's, it, it was, shouldn't have cost twice, more, twice and a half what a traditionally hand drawn animated film cost. I mean, you know what goes into those. Thousands of minorities hunched over easels drawing and, and <laughs> redrawing and painting. And that's that's man hours like you wouldn't believe rather than computer rendering hours, which and maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe it takes just as many people to do a Toy Story 3 as it does to do a Princess and the Frog. I don't know. I, think, I just can't imagine that. I it think would. these days with hand drawn animation, I wouldn't be surprised if you draw it. They scan it into the computer from the drawing, color it in a computer, animate it in the computer, everything done in the computer except for the actual drawing. Oh, okay. So it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're close to the same process, really. But the drawing is still... Like, being... like comic books these days, they don't color them. They put them into the computer and do it all that way, and that's where you get the detail that you get. But yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, I, I still have to believe... We're Tangled done the same way as The Princess and the Frog. Hand-drawn animation with the script that it had and the story that it had, it would have done the same amount of money. If they'd called it Rapunzel, it would have still done the same amount of money that it did as a CG film with the stupid title. Well, see, I don't know about the title thing. Because it's hard to say. I mean, Princess and the Frog, they changed the title too, but That's it's true. basically the same. But if they changed the name The Little Mermaid to Swim and Bitch or something like that. Splash. Yeah. There you go. Then people, and that <laughs> dude, that's dead on exactly what Tangled is to Rapunzel. <laughs> then, you know, we would know. But this, this seems somewhat unprecedented. I, I guess what was... Basil of Baker Street was changed to Great Mouse Detective. Right. But in my opinion, that's a change for the better. I don't know. Neither one of those titles is especially good. The Great Mouse Detective is... Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. But but there, there's one more factor in Tangled that Princess and the Frog didn't have. And I, that's the, the 3D thing. Did not Tangled get released in 3D? I would assume so, because I think they release anything that's CG in 3D just because you can make it 3D without having to shoot it 3D. That's what you always see in the 3D theater is the whatever animated DreamWorks, whoever it is, it's got their 3D picture. So I'm sure this one was 3D as well, but I don't know. I don't see movies in 3D. I boycott them. I, I do too. That uh, Green Hornet flick was supposed to come out in December, didn't end up coming until mid-January because they wanted to do the rejiggering, pardon my French, oh, oh. to make it 3D, you know, turning a 2D movie into a 3D movie. And it didn't fail as spectacularly as I thought it should, but a lot of people were saying that that's because, you know, 60% of the people that went to see it saw it in 3D. Hmm. I, I'm too old, I guess. I don't get it. I don't see why a movie like Green Hornet, why you would want to go see that in 3D. Yeah. The, the whole purpose of 3D is to make something special, to make something visually dynamic, to make something exciting in a way that a 2D movie isn't, right? Mm -hmm. But if every movie is released that way, then it's no longer exciting or special or unique. Right. If it's a movie, like if, if somebody went and saw Tron Legacy in 3D, I can say, you know what? I understand. That looks like a movie that would be a lot of fun in 3D. But if somebody goes to see Morning. Little Fockers in 3D, <laughs> I, I can't get my brain around that. Right. Uh, if, if somebody hasn't seen Tangled, or you know what? If you're in a different country and they actually manned up and called it Rapunzel there, I'll bet you in Europe, in non-English speaking countries, it's called Rapunzel. Probably. Because they respect the source material. <laughs> and they know that that's got a built-in audience recognition that Tangled doesn't. 
right. torcido or whatever it would be in Mexican. <laughs> uh, you know, that doesn't mean anything. Just like it doesn't mean anything in English. Yeah, that's people the problem. There, people over there would be like, what? what? What is that? But you say Disney is Rapunzel and they're like, ah, I know exactly what I'm going to get when I go see that. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess the point I was trying to make is if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Big recommend. Yeah, it. I do too. I give it thumbs up. Give it thumbs up. I give the trailer middle finger up. <laughs> I give the title thumbs down. But it's interesting that you and I are so on the same page on this. But I think our tastes, as far as animation goes, Randy Newman notwithstanding, is almost exactly parallel. And now a word from our sponsors. Rip his throat out. Split his guts and spine. There's nothing to be afraid of. I want to know why a plague bird has appeared. It'd be wise to post an armed watch tonight. Despite our genes, we're not animals. Of course, the last significant visit we had was a century ago. We refuse to be judged on who is human by those without claim to humanity. But every time I see your face, I remember what you did. I can't get past that. Where's that son of a bitch, Bo? Everyone's at fault. All that matters is who ends up dying. No, no. <laughs> How old are you? Plague Birds by Jason Sanford. Find this and other free audio stories at the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. That's at www.doonstief.com. Music for this promo is by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com. No cats were harmed in the making of the story. Well, hey, uh, okay, so we've come to the end of another show. Uh, Big's wife just got up and <laughs> and, and showered on, on her and way to ate work. breakfast and then took off. And we're still recording, but uh, before we go, six months six months ago, five months ago, three months ago, a month ago, we recorded a that gets my goat, and I shelved it. I was too afraid of what people would say, you know, that people would be offended, that people would choose to be offended. That that, that to me is a much greater sin than if I actually said. You know, Oprah Winfrey isn't black. And somebody's just like, oh, hey, that is not true. And they get mad because, you know, something that I, a mistake that I make or, or a lie that I tell or, you know, something like that. But I was just afraid. We did this episode and you probably don't even remember. I've forgotten what it was about. I do remember when we shelved it, though. Yeah, I was, I was just afraid that people would, you know, just shake that fist. The righteous indignation mm -hmm. that I like to talk about. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, I have mellowed in my old age, and I've decided that next week we will present that lost episode of That Gets My Goat. Ooh, bye. And to heck with the consequences. You know, people are going to be upset because I get, oh, I just rage. I get so angry about a wrong in the entertainment that my sisters and my mother choose to watch. Oh, that's and, what it is. Now and I, I remember. I, I just go off and talk about stuff that maybe I, I don't know about. Maybe I have no business spouting about. But hey, it's my show. Our show, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, it's your show. Well, I'm only here for the ride. What I was it was what, what I was angry about, what I was upset about that week. And uh, even if it is offensive, and I, you know, maybe, maybe I, I'm willing to give, concede that it, it, it might be offensive. Uh, hopefully, it's also funny. And so I'm going to present that next week. And yeah, if you know, if you want to rage and, and be hateful and stuff, that's 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 great. Good for you. I'm so proud of you <laughs> that you learned how to type for this purpose. But don't do it. And then you won't have to hear me snidely pretending to congratulate you. Just just if, if it sounds like something that you don't want to hear, don't listen to it. Life is so short. In the time that you've heard me telling you about next week's episode, the rainforest is gone. <laughs> So I just, yeah, I just, I, that was a sneak preview for next week. If, 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 if not, we'll be back in three weeks with an all new That Gets My Goat. All right.
See you later, is folks. Is that okay? You know, I didn't really consult you on that. <laughs> is it okay? Well, it to... is your show, so I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? You said it was my show. I didn't say it was my show. <laughs> you or said did it I? was your show first, and then I went, oh, oh I, 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 I mean our, I mean our show. <laughs> no, come on. I Stop looking tracked. at me like that. I mean, I meant our show. I didn't. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay, you know that's true. I, I did say my show. Um, I'm offended. I'm going to type a comment on this episode about how offended I am. Well, that is your <laughs> your prerogative. That's why I learned to type, you know. Ooh. <laughs> you use my words against me, Spirit. And I have been Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anglovich. See you later. Goodbye. Please, sir, that gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. But you're free to steal it. Dude, that is so not the movie. That poster is not representative of the movie we just saw. Look at the look on their faces, dude. <laughs> There's no moment in any in, no. in a frame when they turn evil. <laughs> There's no reason especially her would ever have a look like that on her face.